Hello Internet! Today I wanted to take a look at polar coordinates inside of shaders. Um, this is an alternative to your standard UV coordinates system. Um, and instead of going in like an XY plane, it actually goes in a radius, um, so it's distance from the center, and then some sort of angle. Um, this gives you a really fun way to do like circular rendering things. Um, things like drops going into a pond might be a good example of this. Um, I would like to do like a light speed type effect where we can actually create a tunnel um, and it looks like you're kind of going into that. Um, I think it should be kind of a fun introduction to this if you're unfamiliar. Um, and it's kind of just me getting back into making videos. So uh, we're both getting to learn. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is start with a new shader graph. So I'm just going to go and create a new shader graph. I don't actually know which one of these I want. Let's just do an unlit shader because sure. Um, uh, sure. Uh, so what we want to do is instead of doing a normal UV. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, UV coordinates are what you're using to actually figure out where on a mesh or where on a texture you're actually going to go and look up the color information. Um, so this goes from zero, zero in the bottom left to one, one in the top right. Um, polar coordinates don't do that. Um, in shader graph, there's a node specifically for them. So you can just go polar coordinates and pull this up and you'll see it looks very different. Um, what this is doing is creating a red and a green channel. So um, an X and a Y exactly identical to UV, but they're in different space. Um, so in this case, from the center, the red, uh, I guess, uh, vector um, is actually going to measure the uh, radius of or how far from the center you are inside of these coordinate system. And then the green is actually going to be mapping a rotational angle around this. So it goes uh, starting from the bottom here from one all the way around um, to zero at the top and then goes into the negatives. So we no longer see that rendered because that's not how this works. Um, but this isn't just disappearing. It's actually going into negative values that just are not physically visible. Um, you can change most of these settings. Um, or if you would like to calculate some of this yourself, um, this prov uh, shader graph provides a, both a length and an arc tangent. Um, so you can use arc tangent two and a length to turn a UV into a polar coordinate yourself. Um, we're just going to use what's already provided because that's what we need. Um, so what I like to do is split this out into its independent values like this. And so we're going to want to do different things with both of these. Um, I'm going to get started here by adding our texture. So we'll do our, I guess, like main texture. Um, and we're going to just throw our clouds that I've already kind of pulled in onto that. Um, one thing you will want to note when working with this, uh, you do need this to actually be set as a tiling texture, or as a repeating texture. Um, there's wrap modes inside of every one of the textures in your Unity project. Um, if you click on the image and then go to wrap mode here, um, there's a bunch of different settings here, and this is going to determine what happens when the coordinate system goes off either end. Um, so in this case, we want it to repeat. So it's going to go off the end and then start at the beginning and go across and just loop around and around and around and around across the texture. Um, clamping, for example, would make it stick to the outer edge. Um, in this case, for this effect, we do not want that. That will not make the effect that we want, and it will give like not not a not a not a good effect. <laughs> um, so you can play with those if you would like. Maybe you'll get different things. Um, maybe you'll like some of them. But for what we're trying to do, we definitely want this to repeat. Um, so. Let's do a texture sampler. Uh, that's not how you do a texture sampler. <laughs> um, uh, so let's go and actually do the correct thing here. 
and pull this in, throw our main texture onto that. And we can actually just run these polar coordinates directly into the UV. And you can actually see we get this radial effect. Um, it works exactly the same as a UV because it, it is sort of one. Um, we're just using the coordinate system in a different way than we have typically used. Um, so in this case, radius is going to be uh, um, on the, uh, I guess, U axis. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the green part is actually going to be going all the way around. And because this texture actually loops, you see that it actually has a full circle around it. The around the outside, the texture is actually repeated twice uh, because it goes from one to zero, which is a full thing of the texture. So you'll get one texture on one side and one texture on the other side. Um, you can't tell because the entire thing is looping um, and because it's looping and not mirrored or something like that, um, you will see like a clean ish effect. Um, so this gives us that sort of allows us to kind of create this fun effect. We can just run that directly into our output and we get this fun thing. Um, that can be useful for some things, but we actually kind of in this situation, I would like to animate this. Um, so I'd like this to either go in or out. Um, and we can actually do that just by taking and tweaking these values, which is why we had the split here. Um, so I'm going to start by just adding a uh, new value here for our cloud speed. Uh, we're just going to pull that in and we're going to add a time input. And we're going to work with both of these as a way to sort of mess with this effect. Um, so time comes into your shader graph with a bunch of different options here. The top value is going to be just a standard time. You also have sine and cosine as time. So those are going to give you fun waves um, and then deltas as an option. So if you want to see the change in time, uh, that's an option for you as well. Um, in most cases, I've found that I typically tend to use just time or sine or cosine um, and very rarely deltas. Um, you may have different use cases that need that. Um, but so what we're going to do um, is we're trying to make this have a speed multiplier. Um, so let's multiply our speed by our time. And this is just going to create a constantly incrementing thing that's going to increment at different times depending on the cloud speed we have. It's set to zero right now because that's just what we have we can set that to say one and it will just turn into this white box. Um, the reason that's happened is because it's gone beyond one more than one second. So it's just forever into the wherever. If you want to see that this is working, we can attach this to like a sign and you'll see it come in and out. Um, so we have our time. What we'd like to do is add that with our red value. So the red is the radius. It's the distance from the center point that goes from zero to one. And then we're just adding on this additional time multiplier. So zero to one plus some fixed amount. So we've effectively created a series, a ring, a definition of a ring, and we're just going to either move it in or move it out all together. Um, and this kind of allows us to animate this effect. So uh, let me clean this up because this looks real gross. There we go. Uh, so that solves for this. And then all we need to do uh, is create another vector two to bring this in. So we can take our green value, propagate it along, and then take our fun solved value and just plug that into the UV. And now we have this fun animated cloud and we can actually change the speed of this by just swapping this um, so we can make it go in we can make it go out and kind of play with it as we would like um, so if we want to see what that looks like in say this uh, i can take my shader uh, not in a game mode and apply it here um, inside of unity you'll see this looks like really um, buggy 
Um, Unity doesn't constantly re-render your scenes when you're in an editor mode. Um, so basically when you're not playing, animated shaders are not going to update at your normal like 60 frames a second or however fast your computer is. Um, they're going to update whenever Unity decides to redraw the screen. What you can see is never. Um, if I start moving my mouse, that might trigger a couple draws, but this is done to uh, as a performance thing. Um, if you want to actually see this, you can just click play. There's also options in the render that will make this happen. Um, but you can see now we have this like expanding fog. Um, so it kind of looks like we're going into this, but the center doesn't look great. Um, it'd be really cool if we could maybe fade that out or get rid of it. Um, kind of gives us that motion effect that we were going for, but the center kind of just, it looks like artifacts. So, uh, we're going to fix that. Um, to do that, I'm just going to do two things. Uh, we're going to add an alpha to this fragment shader. Um, in order to do that, we also need to change the surface type from opaque to transparent. That actually makes us use that alpha. And then I need to take this red value that we've solved all the way from the start here and just drag it over. Um, and so the reason we're doing this is because you can see the red in the center is measuring the radius, the distance from the center. So zero, zero is going to mean that there's nothing there. It's entirely transparent. And then as you get further and further away, it's going to do that. Because I'm doing this before adding on the time, that value is never going to change. It's going to be a constant zero. And so I can actually use that as a way to modify this uh, transparency. And so now when I go into my scene, I can actually see through the center of this, but nowhere else. Um, uh, let's maybe actually play this so it looks a little bit better. Right. And so this means that I can take, for example, objects like this sphere and throw it behind. Uh, that's the wrong direction, but we can throw it behind this effect. And we'll sort of get this like overlaying cloud effect. And it looks like we're kind of going into this, in this case, maybe coming up on a planet or whatever. Um, we can tint this, we can do other effects on this to kind of change how it works, but really all we're doing is sort of messing with um, transparency and color based upon a radius and an angle rather than an XY position. So we're sort of converting from like uh, the circles. We're thinking with circles. Um, I don't know if that's a good way to describe it, but that's how my brain thinks about it. Um, and so this is just one of those like fun, fun things you can do. Um, I, again, I've seen this in like pond ripples, for example, like if you're trying to draw raindrops hitting like a pond, that's this, <laughs> right? You're, you have your radius, you just increase the radius um, and you can use that to simulate a drop of water. Um, similar effect here, uh, but you can just pull this into your game and use it. Um, I think that's all we need to cover here. Um, we could make this more complicated. We could make it more advanced. Um, I don't think we need to. And also we're probably, we'd probably get into like just more complicated things that were useful for less and less people. Um, we'll probably pick this up in other videos and use this in other ways. Um, but I feel like this is kind of a fun way to kind of get you started if you've never seen this before um, or if you've never tried Shader Graph. Uh, there you go. Um, there's a fun, fun thing you can do. Um, I don't really know a good way to share a shader graph. Um, it's not something that I'm still kind of trying to figure out. Um, there'll probably be some way to find that, but I, I will be actively trying to figure that out uh, as I post this. Um, so if there's a way that is useful for you, um, please let me know so that I can actually hopefully hopefully make this as useful for the people who are watching as as possible um but i think that's it that's all we have to do so uh thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one so till then see you, internet